Hello everyone and welcome to our second video, Working Concepts and Structure, where all the magic happens. This is perhaps the most important video in this short video series, as we're going to be going into the details of OFDM-SPM. First things first, I'd like to point out that as in our journal paper, we'll showcase the use of OFDM-SPM with QPSK symbol modulation, which is a quadrature signal constellation scheme. That is, it uses both in-phase and quadrature subcarriers to transmit data. This is partly because QPSK is to an extent considered a higher order modulation scheme. And this is something that we want to show that OFDM SPM can handle and deal with and produce gains with. So in this video, we're going to examine the general transmitter and receiver structures of OFDM SPM. The concept of OFDM SPM modulation and its terms and specifics will be explained. We'll go over them. And an example will follow to showcase the advantages of OFDM SPM. So first coming to the transmitter design, if you look at the transmitter design, if you look at the transmitter diagram over here of OFDM SPM, you're going to notice that it's not actually much different from that of conventional OFDM, where in conventional OFDM, you would just have one data stream of incoming bits with one block for symbol modulation, which would be simply QPSK as in our case. Then after that, the, the modulated symbols would go through the, con the conventional OFDM transmission process into the antenna. In OFDM SPM, however, we have two blocks for modulation in parallel. So consequently, we also, we also get two streams of data instead of one, which is a great gain. So we split the incoming bits into two groups. And one of them will, will be used to determine the power of the subcarriers of the OFDM symbol, whereas the other one will be carried by the, by the symbol modulation scheme, which we are using, which in our case is QPSK. After that, the symbols modulated will be assigned to their subcarriers with their corresponding powers. And then the transmission process is exactly the same to that of conventional OFDM, and from that to the antenna. For people who might be wondering what N is, N is the number of data carriers in an OFDM symbol. And M is the modulation order, which for QPSK is four, as QPSK has four constellation points, thus allowing us to enable to, to transmit two bits per symbol. So as I said, the, the difference is not very big. It doesn't add much complexity. However, it gives us a whole extra data stream that we can transmit. So here we have a small diagram just to show you how OFDM is different from conventional FDM and how OFDM SPM is different from conventional OFDM. So when using conventional FDM, between every two subcarriers, we would have to put a guard band to ensure that there is no interference between them. This, as you can see, uses a lot of the frequency band and actually it wastes a lot of the frequency band. When we came to conventional OFDM, Using the orthogonality of the subcarriers, we were able to, to minimize the interference, give, get zero interference between these subcarriers while saving a lot of the bandwidth, as you can see. If we use OFDM SPM furthermore, we can reduce the amount of bandwidth used. So as you can see in conventional OFDM, while we use eight subcarriers to transfer the same number of bits using OFDM SPM, we only need to use four subcarriers. And that's a great gain. It's a doubling of the spectral efficiency because OFDM SPM in this case is twice as efficient as conventional OFDM. So let's, let's display this with some bits actually. Let's show you how this works. So in OFDM SPM, you're gonna have two streams of bits as we said. One of them is the ones in green are gonna dictate the power of each subcarrier. So in our case, we only have two power levels. So a one would mean a high power subcarrier level and a zero over here would mean a low power subcarrier level as here in red, as you can see. And then we have a one again, high power subcarrier. So, and in addition to this, we still have one bit which is carried by the QPSK symbol. So QPSK, as we know, carries two bits per symbol, one in the in-phase in in subcarrier and one in the quadrature subcarrier. But when using OFDM SPM, as you can see, we are able to transfer for each subcarrier, instead of two bits, we're able to transfer four bits with each pair of subcarriers. 
So as you can see here, we are able to transfer a total of 12 bits using only six pairs of subcarriers. Now, if we come to conventional OFDM, on the other hand, in order to transfer 12 bits, we, we need to use six pair of subcarriers, whereas in OFDM SPM, we only used three. So as you can see, OFDM SPM uses half the bandwidth which conventional OFDM would use to transfer the same number of bits. So as OFDM SPM modulates its bits in a different manner than conventional OFDM, this would result in a different signal constellation diagram. So QPSK when used with OFDM SPM would have a rather different signal constellation diagram. In, in OFDM SPM's case, for each branch, either quadrature or in-phase subcarrier, each of them would have four constellation points, thus giving us four by four, which gives us a total of 16 constellation points, which allows us to transfer four, four bits per, per subcarrier per sub pair. So as you can see, for example, if we were to say that this is the in-phase subcarrier, we have four constellation points over here for uh, each transferring two bits. So the first bit would determine the power of the subcarrier, which is high or low, which is where a one corresponds to a high and a, a zero corresponds to a low power level. Whereas the second bit would is the is the bit carried by the by the by the QPSK symbol modulation, and it determines the phase of the symbol actually, where a zero indicates a phase shift leading to a negative symbol, and a one would indicate no phase shift, uh, thus giving us a positive symbol. So that was that was transmission. When we come to reception, the same thing applies actually. If you look at the, the receiver of the conventional OFDM scheme, you'd notice that after, after the conventional OFDM receiving processes, which are ADC, removing the cyclic prefix and FFT, in conventional OFDM, you'd only have one demodulation block over here, but consequently you'd only have one stream of bits. Whereas in here you have two demodulation blocks in parallel. One of them would detect and demodulate the power bits, which determines the power of the received subcarriers. If, it, if it's a high power subcarrier, that would mean a one. If it's a low power subcarrier, that would mean a zero. And in the bottom, you'd have the symbol demodulator, which would, just as in conventional OFDM, demodulate the QPSK symbols. And by doing this, we thus receive twice the, same, twice the number of bits that would be received by conventional OFDM. So in order to show you how, how much resources OFDM SPM can actually save when compared to conventional OFDM. We bring us a, a small example. Let's assume that in a certain scenario, we wanted to transfer 208 bits separately by using OFDM SPM and using conventional OFDM. If we were to use conventional OFDM, we'd require to use 104 subcarriers, each of them requiring a power P and a bandwidth W. This results in a, in, in a total power of 104p and a total bandwidth of 104w to transmit 208 bits. If we use OFDM SPM, however, the 208 bits can be split into two groups of 104. One of them would be, will be modulated by the QPSK symbols, which will be assigned to 52 subcarriers. So 52 pairs of subcarriers, 52 quadrature and in-phase subcarriers. And the other group will determines the power levels of the 52 subcarrier pairs. As such, we only use 52 subcarriers to transfer 204, 208, pardon me, bits by using a total power of 52p and a bandwidth of 52w, which is exactly half the resources used by conventional OFDM. So as we said in SPM modulation, according to the power bits, the in-phase and quadrature subcarriers are assigned high or low power. If the power bit corresponding to in-phase or quadrature or the quadrature subcarrier is zero, it would it would it would be low, as in the constellation diagram. It would give it low power. If it's a one, on the other hand, it would be assigned high power, or H, as in the constellation diagram. So we understand how OFDM SPM works. We understand the basic concept. However, changing the the power of the subcarriers and making it different would definitely uh, affect the performance of the scheme. 
And furthermore, how can we assure that the power used by OFDM SPM does not exceed that of conventional OFDM? So in order to tackle this, we have a mathematical constraint right over here, which is L squared plus H squared equals 2EB. What this means is that the, the, the value, the low power amplitude value square plus the high power amplitude value square equals 2 multiplied by EB, which is the energy of the bit, which is normalized to 1. So by following this constraint, we, we assure that OFDM SPM is able to transfer twice the amount of bits by using the same power which would be used by conventional OFDM to transfer the same number of bits. So when, when we compare these two, it turns out that actually OFDM SPM is saving half the power in this case. And as for the values of L and H, in order to determine the optimum values of L, of L and H as they affect the performance of the scheme generally, what we do is we go through successive trial and error. So through exhaustive trial and error, we find out the best values for L and H and use them for our scheme in order to obtain optimal performance. Now, as I said over here, OFDM SPM when, converting, when compared to conventional OFDM saves power. However, this gives us flexibility, actually. This gives us a choice at hand. Do we actually want to save this power or do we want to perhaps use it to improve the performance of our, of our OFDM SPM scheme? Do we want our bit error rate to be better? Do we want to improve the reliability of the scheme? But in order to do this, since we would not be using more power than, OF, than conventional OFDM, we can simply use the power that we saved, thus making OFDM, OFDM and, and OFDM SPM use the exact amount of power, while OFDM SPM still doubles the spectral efficiency and data rate. So in order to do this, we follow this equation right here, L squared plus H squared equals 4EB, and we are able to find the optimum values of L and H exactly in the same manner that we did for the equation before. And as I said, in this case, the average power used by OFDM SPM for each OFDM symbol is equal to that of conventional OFDM. So in order to give you a clear image, let's assume that what we have over here is the in-face of carriers of the QPSK symbols, right? And the OFDM symbol. So for regular OFDM, you'd have all the subcarriers at the same power level and carrying one bit, right? Well, when we use OFDM SPM, we're using half the number of the subcarriers. So half the power over here is saved. And that's what we're doing in this case when we say power saving. We're transmitting the same number of bits with using only half the power. But since we save this power, if we, if we wanted to, we could reallocate it to the subcarriers over here. As you can see over here, when power is reallocated, the peaks of the subcarriers is higher than in the case of the power saving. And this results in in, in better performance and less susceptibility to noise. So we understood how the transmission is done, how the modulation is done. Well, what about the detection? Well, since we transmitted two groups of bits separately, I mean, modulated two groups of bits separately, we also have to demodulate them separately. And since we know the power levels of the high and the values of the high and low power levels, what we can do is in order to detect them, we can simply follow thresholding, which is relatively simple and is not complex at all. So since we know the two power levels, all we need to do is draw a midpoint between them and keep it as a threshold. And what we basically do is we say, okay, if this received subcarrier has a power higher than that of the threshold, then, well, it's obvious that this is a high power subcarrier and this is a one. And Otherwise, if it's not, if the power of the, sub of the received subcarrier is less than the threshold, then this is a low power subcarrier, thus meaning a zero. So that's how the power bits are demodulated. And as for the QPSK, the symbol, the, the, the bits carried by the QPSK symbol modulation, they're simply demodulated the same way they would be done in conventional OFDM by conventional QPSK demodulation. So as I said, the process in itself is not complex and adds a small number of floating point, floating point operations actually. 
which lead which 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 translates to very small computational complexity furthermore another point that we should point out actually is that unlike other schemes such as SIM OFDM and OFDM IM OFDM SPM does not introduce error propagation so what do i mean by this when i say it when i when i say this what i mean is that by error propagation let's say that i were that i were to 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 detect the bit of the if i were, that i were to detect the power of a certain subcarrier that i received through all of the mspm and let's say that i detected it in error uh, i it, it was in it was originally a one but i detected it as a zero well would this necessarily cause me to detect the power of the subcarrier adjacent to it in a wrong manner or would this or would this perhaps make me detect, detect the QPSK symbol in a wrong manner? Well, as it turns out, OFDM SPM actually doesn't suffer from this issue. And this is because the power of each subcarrier when relative to its adjacent one is actually independent. So the, the power detection of one subcarrier is independent from the one next to it. And when speaking in terms of QPSK symbol demodulation, well, when we're detecting the power of the subcarrier, that's exactly what we're doing. We're measuring the power of the subcarrier against a certain threshold. However, when we're detecting the QPSK symbols, what we're doing is we're actually measuring the phase of the symbol. And these two are independent. So in, in that sense, there is no inherent error propagation caused by OFDM SPM. And this is actually quite an advantage. So what have we achieved? Well, we've achieved something important, which is that we brought an idea to life, first of all. What, we, what we're doing is we added a third dimension to carry data, which is the power, the power levels of the subcarriers of the OFDM symbol. And in our case, we only chose two, but these can be changed. And according to them, you can make your own system. But all in all, what we achieved is we achieved an OFDM-based modulation technique, which is able to transfer twice the amount of data which OFDM can transfer for the same resources or less. This shows the technique's advantages in terms of spectral efficiency, data rate, and energy efficiency. As we showed, half the, half the power can be saved or reallocated. And furthermore, the OFDM SPM is twice as spectrally efficient as conven conventional OFDM. Furthermore, OFDM SPM gets the job done while adding minor complexity. This is of utmost importance, especially to applications such as an IoT. And in fact, it can reduce the complexity when compared to that of conventional OFDM if necessary. For more details, please look at our journal paper for this. OFDM SPM further gives the user flexibility in terms of power usage versus reliability while doubling the data rate. So you have two options about what you want to do with that power according to your application, whereas the data rate is still doubled, and that's great. And last but not least, OFDM SPM does not cause inherent an inherent error propagation, unlike other schemes. So as we have seen, OFDM SPM works rather in a rather intuitive manner, in a simple manner. It doesn't add much complexity. It has a lot of gains, uh, conceptually speaking. So now all we need to do is actually test it. Uh, let's see how it actually performs in simulations when when we when we simulate transmitting data and receiving. So that's what we're going to be doing in our next video. Uh, stay tuned, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. See you.